Good day! In today's lesson, we will be dealing with oral communication for social purposes. Now, when we say social purpose, it means your primary goal is to socialize or interact with other people. So, oral communication for social purpose will involve listening and speaking in order to improve and develop good relationship. So, it requires different communication skills. So, those skills that you've learned in our previous lessons, you may apply them that may help you in communicating with other people. Now, the different types of speeches that we have discussed before may be also used for social purposes. Example, casual speech style may be used for acquaintances or when the topic is serious. Intimate speech style is used between close friends. Formal speech style may be used when instructions or other formally established groups formally meet to develop close ties such as between nationalities, organizations, associations, and etc. We have here expressions that you may use for social purposes. For making suggestions, you may begin with your statement saying, I think we should, for example, you will say, I think we should get to know each other first. Another expression, maybe we could, for example, you will say, maybe we could work on together. We also have here expressions such as, why don't we? I suggest that we, how about, do you think we could? should so those are some of the expressions that you can use we also have here common expressions for agreeing and disagreeing for agreeing you may use the following expressions i think that's a good idea another one i totally agree we also have i agree with what you say and then we have i agree with you and the last one we have that's right so to further understand that, we have here provided sample dialogues that you may use as a reference for a guide. Now, let us read. Joseph, I think we should take this road to the airport. Abdul, I think that's a good idea. Another sample dialogue. Jubal, why don't we deposit our money in the bank and use the car for purchases instead of carrying a large amount of cash? Louis. I totally agree. So, uh, as you may notice, this entire dialogue or conversation shows agreement or that they are agree with each other. And for disagreeing, we have here some of the expressions. I agree when you say that, but, also have another one, I don't think that's a good idea. Then you must indicate your reason. Next. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. And then the other one, I'm not sure I would agree with that. And then you must indicate your answer. We also have here sample dialogues. So, Anna, maybe we can eat at this place. We really need to eat before taking that long bus ride. Aya, I agree when you say that we need to eat before taking that long bus ride. But I would think this is a good place to eat. Ali, how about packing our lunch and eat at the bus station? Ara, I don't think that's a good idea. This kind of food spoils easily. Another sample dialogue. Mercy, since the storm is predicted to pass through the central area of the lake, maybe we could take the roads that pass through the sides. Well, I'm not sure I would agree with that. The storm might easily change course and end up getting caught in its center. So as you can see, the conversation expresses disagreement, but in a way that will not offend the listener or the receiver. We also have here common expressions that you may use when you are giving a constructive feedback. So when we say constructive feedback, it means to give feedback to an individual in a way that will lead to improvement or corrections. Now look at our sample feedback below. You're wrong. Another one. 
that is not how you do things around here. And last, you have no idea what you are doing. So if you are the person who will hear this feedback, what will you feel? Of course, you will feel sad, you will feel useless, you'll feel upset and not motivated. So those feedback, we call that as destructive feedback. Now, how to give feedback in a way that will lead to improvements or corrections or in a way that will not offend your listener? You may use constructive feedback. So let's have a sample scenario. So let's say that John has been an employee at your company for six months. So lately, he seems disengaged and not motivated to work. To give a constructive response, you may respond this way. I have noticed that you don't seem as motivated to do work as you usually do and it makes me feel like I am doing something wrong. If there are reasons as to why you are feeling this way, I would love to talk with you about it. I think if we meet up once a week to check up on everything, you could be much happier. So in this manner, you are giving a feedback that will lead him to improvements in a way that he will not be offended. Let's have another scenario. So let's assume that Carol has recently taken a more backseat role in her position as a manager. Now to give her a constructive feedback, you may respond this way. I noticed that you are not taking as much responsibility and initiative as you used to do. It makes me feel like I have not done a good job. Did I say or do something that will make you react this way? I would love for you to address any problems or concerns you have. So saying this kind of uh, feedback, the listener will feel that you are really concerned and will also make her improve herself. So those are some of the sample constructive feedback that you may give. Next, to guide you in giving constructive feedback, I have here prepared some of the common expressions that you may use. So we have, I understand that you want to, so indicate something positive, but, and the next one, I appreciate that you, and then you have to indicate the affirmation of the person's good or intentions. However, and the next one, it's good that you and then affirmation of the person's good intentions but so let's use those in a sample statement a librarian talking to a library user i appreciate that you want to help me by returning the books you read on the shelf but it's better for you to leave them on the table so i can check which books are actually being read now, a person to a person who works slowly. I understand that you want to contribute to the completion of the work, but you need to do it fast so others who depend on your work can start theirs immediately. Let's have another statement. A teacher to his or her students. It's good that you want your classmates to participate in the activity, but you need to do so without having to threaten them. So these things will help you have an idea on how to give constructive feedback. We also have here things that will help you in developing your skills in communication. So number one is sensitivity to others' participant desire to speak. So it is never okay if you will do all that talking. It is better if you will give opportunity for other person to speak as well. So he or she will have a chance to express his or her thoughts, ideas, feelings, and emotions. So doing so, uh, you will have an exchange of information, opinions, perspectives, beliefs, and etc. So you will have a fruitful conversation. Next, 
engaging others to speak. So we all know that not all people are, are confident enough to speak or voice out what they feel, what are their thoughts. As an individual, you can help them by asking them about what they can say in a particular topic. So this will serve as the fastest way to make a shy person speak. And then number three, sensitivity to others desire not to speak. So you must also remember that it is good if someone will share their ideas and feelings. But you must also know that there are really people that prefer not to talk but will listen uh, or rather. And if you will force them, they might feel bad, irritated, and worse angry. So what you need is to observe that particular person. Um, you have to observe them first or uh, attempt to speak to them. And if you sense that they really don't like to speak and, uh, and they are a bit annoyed, you must respect what they prefer. Next, number four, showing a willingness to listen. So you must show them that you are interested with what others are saying. By doing so, you uh, send them a message that you value them. And this will also help you to understand them better. And number five, remembering what others have already said. You must do this so that the speaker will feel that you are really listening to what they are saying. And also this will help you if the speaker will ask you regarding the topics or message said by the speaker, you'll be able to answer them correctly. And then we also have here guidelines for speaking socially. So number one, be polite. So whatever the social status the person you are talking to, you must be polite all the time. So whatever gender, whatever your differences are or similarities, you must be polite. So because this will strengthen social bonds and lessens any existing disagreement. Next, number two, be humble. So people do not appreciate a boastful or arrogant attitude. So they do not like it when you keep on talking about how great you are. And they also do not like when you say bad things to people who are not around. And also, to be humble, you must also take into consideration your tone, voice, rhythm of speech, all must show humility. Next, number three, avoid questions or comments that may embarrass your listener. So you need to understand that some questions can cause embarrassment on the part of your listener. That's why, before asking questions or making comments, uh, evaluate whether or not they put your listener in an embarrassing situation. So avoid questions that may be too personal. Next, understand that some questions or comments require a level of closeness. So some questions may not be as unless you are at the level of intimacy for such a question or comment. Example, questions about personal or, or family problems may not be asked by a mere acquaintance. So sometimes people with terminal illness do not appreciate being asked about it because it only reminds them of their situations. Next, number five, do not talk negatively about others because this will not develop relationship but rather ruin a relationship. Last, we have be patient. So sometimes you will experience difficulty in relating to others because they do not behave or say the, the way you expect them to be. So this thing will remind you to be so those are some of the guidelines that you may follow in speaking socially. So I hope you've learned something from me today. Thank you.